Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a highly respected and accomplished and a well-awarded poet from Singapore, Mr. Eric Dinse Valius. Eric, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Ashutosh. Uh, it uh, brings me great delight uh, to Thank be with you. you today. Thank you. Uh, Eric is the director of the Poetry Festival in Singapore. He's published two poetry collections. He's been shortlisted for the Singapore Literature Prize for After the Fall, Dirges and Ruins in 2014. He's co-edited six anthologies. He's won the Gosin Tub Creative Writing Composition Prize, and he's been awarded, recognized, and felicitated several times. So Eric, after such an amazing uh, journey that you seem to have already had, and there's so much more to look forward to, I'm sure. Let me ask you, when did you first realize that you wanted to make your passion into your career? I was in primary four, uh, and um, I had uh, worked for the school newspaper. Mm. And my assignment then was to write a poem, um, and I did. Mm. Um, and uh, the very first poem that I ever wrote uh, was about uh, a wanderer. Mm -hmm. the, the, the title, in fact, was The Wanderer. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I didn't know at that time that that would actually be my life journey. Um, mm -hmm. I would travel to um, other countries and live there and eventually find um, my career or mm -hmm. careers mm -hmm. um, and um, ultimately my passion in life, which is to write mm -hmm. um, overseas. Yes, that was um, very precocious. You know, I was precocious, um, just like maybe some of your uh, your your audience members. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, you you started writing from you know in which country, and then you moved to Singapore. Is it? Yes, uh, I started in Manila, the Philippines. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was writing for um, school newspapers, mm -hmm. and I, I wrote poetry as well. Uh, but then in the 1990s, I moved to Taipei. Mm -hmm. And over there, I continued writing poetry. And then I wrote uh, business news articles, mm -hmm. as well as a, a market leader's column for an English language newspaper in Taipei, uh, tai Taiwan News. Okay. And then um, from 2000, I've been based here in Singapore. Um, I did my PhD in creative writing. I, I obtained my degree last year. <laughs> Wow, and um, and I, I've published here, and um, I, I would say that I've actually established my poetic career here in Singapore, like up, away from uh, from my home country. Amazing, and you know you published two poetry collections. Uh, tell me a little bit about it. Yes, uh, the very first one was a world in transit, uh, which was published in 2011, mm -hmm. which is about the migrant experience. Mm -hmm. And um, that is the experience of millions of people in the world uh, right now. And um, I just uh, wrote about uh, what I knew about that uh, mm -hmm. condition. And um, there's an old adage that um, uh, people tell beginning writers that they have to write about what they know. Mm -hmm. So I took that to heart um, at the beginning of my writing career and um, explored uh, what I uh, remember mm -hmm. and what I imagine um, the diasporic experience to be. Um, so I, I've lived in Taiwan, here in Singapore. I've traveled all over. Um, in the course of my uh, journalism career in Taiwan, I, I traveled also to Europe. And as a poet, I've... Uh, traveled to Kenya mm -hmm. uh, for a poetry festival. And um, I've also realized that um, the more you stay away from your home country mm -hmm. or from um, um, a place of, um, of comfort, mm -hmm. um, um, when you go out of your, um, the confines of your, of your, typical experience and mm -hmm. you get to know more about yourself mm. and your possibilities mm. um, and, and you get to explore them more. You, you get more daring um, mm. uh, in the course of uh, being abroad. Amazing. 
Amazing. And that's, uh, that's, the, first, that's the first uh, yeah. collection. Uh, I should, mm -hmm. I, I should touch. Yeah. The second one is After the Fall, There is a Among Ruins. You mentioned mm -hmm. that. And this is it. Um, and that was, uh, part of it was written in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, when I used to go on writing residencies. Um, so that seems to be an American uh, thing. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of their writers go on fellowships. Or they, they, they go to writing camps. Mm -hmm. And I, I went to at least three residencies there mm -hmm. uh, in Vermont, Massachusetts, and Washington. Mm -hmm. um, and because of um, generous funding from uh, the National Arts Council here in Singapore, mm -hmm. I was able to uh, take a few weeks to just concentrate on writing. Mm -hmm. And that resulted in uh, the second collection ever the fall, There Dirty Among Ruins. This was inspired by 9-11, really. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, because at that time, I was uh, considering writing about that um, mm. for my PhD. Um, but then other uh, collections on, this, on that issue uh, mm. were published. So I thought of um, changing tack. Um, so from 9-11, so the, the, uh, the theme or the themes of the, the volume expanded mm. uh, to include um, various traumas. Uh, throughout history, as well as um, the fight against uh, terror. Mm. And then wow. eventually, um, I, I, I would do research on the World War II experience here in Singapore. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing. And you've also edited six anthologies. Yes, Tell me a little bit about these also. Yes. Um, I can't it's hard for me to say no to friends. Mm. And um, this might surprise some people that um, all these collaborations um, in editing uh, came about because of requests from friends. Okay. Um, so I've edited a couple of anthologies of Singaporean and Filipino writings mm -hmm. here in Singapore. Um, the first one was Get Lucky, which was a bestseller in the Singapore Literature Festival okay. perhaps five years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sequel just uh, came out this year, uh, Get Luckier. It's free online. You may want to check it out, Get Luckier, okay. um, which is about uh, the stories of Singaporeans and Filipinos Hmm. and their dealings with one another. Um, hmm. So these two countries are in Southeast Asia. Hmm. It's a pity that uh, this relationship is not much dealt with in literature or, or in literary writing. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've, um, we're trying to make up for that lack hmm. uh, with these two anthologies. And then uh, I've also co-edited uh, a collection of the best Poetry here in Singapore, mm -hmm. uh, entitled Singapore Poems 2015 2016, with okay. um, the volunteer organization that I work for, Poetry Festival Singapore. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's one, two, three. Um, and then I had one assignment with the National Parks Board. I right. believe you have an equivalent in India yeah. and in other places. And um, it was my task. Uh, with the help of my mentor, uh, the professor emeritus Edwin Thambu. Mm -hmm. You should also get in touch with him and I'll, I'll give you his contact data mm -hmm. uh, uh, shortly. Uh, he asked me to, to work on it and um, I was given the task of inviting uh, the best poets here mm -hmm. to contribute um, pieces on parts or aspects of the Singapore Botanic Gardens, which um, for your information, yeah. is uh, a UNESCO uh, World Heritage Site. Correct. Um, and uh, it's growing every year. Um, so they're acquiring properties. And um, their ultimate goal is to make Singapore a city in a garden. <laughs> I agree. An amazing uh, ideal. You know, we, we used to live in Singapore from 89 to 96. And... Yes. We were almost next to the botanical gardens in a wonderful in a condominium called Villa del Rose. So, yes, mm. it was, uh, wonderful. It's an expensive place to live in, but uh, it's also uh, it is. 
very clean. Um, yeah, and uh, I, I also take weekly walks there. It's not too far from my house. I know. Too. It's a beautiful garden. But moving on mm. now, Eric. Yes. You know, you write about the migrant experience and personal trauma. With yes. I humor do. and empathy. Yes. Tell me I about why you chose this, uh, this genre. And uh, do read out a small poem that you may have on trauma. Yes. Well, um, thanks for that. So... Uh, this is a theme that is very close to my heart because as I have uh, mentioned, um, I've lived practically um, more years abroad mm. than I have back home right. <laughs> at this stage. Um, yeah, so I, I, I left home um, in the 1990s and mm. um, I occasionally go back um, and I will um, after two long years of COVID Mm. Um, the, the COVID epidemic. I'm I'm going back home in June, mm. uh, first time in two years. Um, mm. But my return there is intermittent and um, not very long um, for every time that I go back. Um, so um, the migrant experience is something that I uh, that I experience. It's my existential condition, mm. uh, and so I cannot help but write about that. Um, and uh, so th this is kind of unique in Singapore because um, I think I was the very first permanent resident uh, to get published uh, by a literary publisher here, uh, Ethos wow. Books. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so the, the theme of that first collection was the migrant experience. Mm -hmm. And after that, um, there has been a flood of um, other books mm -hmm. about the migrant experience here. Um, I don't know if you, if you're aware, but um, there are uh, foreign migrant workers mm -hmm. who have also uh, published their own poetry collections and memoirs. Wow! Um, and their plight um, came to the world's attention during COVID. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, um, so they've been. Uh, the sector uh, that has been most affected by that mm. uh, dread disease uh, in uh, in this republic mm. because of their living conditions. Um, and yeah, so just, um, I was yes. glad that um, mm. Mm. I opened uh, the gates Correct. To, to this uh, genre mm. Mm. Uh, here. Mm. And I look forward to more of them, in fact. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, yes. I'm sure. Yes. But please do read out something uh, that you have written yes. on trauma yes. for our um, viewers and listeners. Yes. I'll be very glad to. Um, this is a reworked um, poem. Mm -hmm. uh, the original was in After the Fall, Dirtis Among Ruins uh, by Ethos Books. Mm -hmm. And it was occasioned by, okay, this is a trauma poem, mm -hmm. uh, by that dreadful massacre in Utøya, Norway. Mm. Uh, about a decade ago, mm -hmm. um, but I've reworked it uh, because of the results of the recent presidential elections mm -hmm. in my home country, mm -hmm. the Philippines. That's also kind of traumatic for some people. Correct. <laughs> uh, and uh, so this is return to the island. Mm -hmm. Before your silent tears dry and you clamber out of the depths, return to that place of grief at noon, before your eyes well up and all is still. Mm. The abandoned house is dwarfed by a leafy poplar. The wind scratches your face and darts to the road. The lighthouse woos a vacant vinaigrette sea. The sun is veiled by the thin mist of your breath. Children's shrieks are faint like the chirp of crickets. Dilated pupils are frozen, or are you hallucinating? There is no word for any of you in that garden where a brother slew his brother, as on the island that crushed your youth, or the airport whose x-ray scanner gorged on your bags. Take in all of that beach as it crumbles, leaving your body covered in black mud. Feel your crooked scars and sunken cheeks the scowl of indifference in a foreign land, mm. or the dried blood of the disappeared on coarse sand. Your wailing blares like an infant's born too soon. 
Yes, the terrain is blistering and strange, but the sulfur, the sulfur dust rubs off flakes of dead skin, the prickly world, to reveal the pink beneath, burnished gold in the sun's piercing rays. Wow. Stand with. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful, lovely words. And it almost, I mean, I could almost visualize what I saw and read about uh, what happened in, in that country. But thank yes. you. Thank you for sharing your poem. Absolutely. So uh, now let me move on and ask you uh, a couple of questions on the poetry festival that yes. you are a director of. Yes. My question to you is, tell me a little bit about what you do at this uh, in this organization and how do you promote existing poets and support new poets um, yeah so i'm a, a non executive director of okay. poetry festival singapore which is a, a volunteer society here um, there are um, four other directors uh, three of which uh, three of whom represent um, the other official mother tongues mm -hmm. um, so in Singapore, there are um, four official languages mm. uh, because of the, the racial mix of the people. Mm. Yeah. Um, so besides English, the other mother tongues are Chinese, Malay, and Tamil. Yeah. And um, several years ago, Edwin Thambu, um, a mentor of ours, mm -hmm. uh, put us together very much like um, uh, BTS. <laughs> um, and then... So he thought of um, helping, helping us organize um, events uh, such as seminars, readings, uh, and competitions mm -hmm. in order to promote uh, poetry and the other arts mm -hmm. in all uh, the languages uh, of this country. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are unique in that we are promoting all the languages mm -hmm. uh, in the poetic form. Okay. And um, it goes beyond poetry. Uh, as well, um, this coming uh, July. So our festival will run from July 29 to 31 this year. It's free online uh, on Facebook. Uh, you can visit Poetry Festival Singapore's page on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have a website and um, we will have readings, um, guest speakers from India and other places. Mm -hmm. um, and the theme this year is resurgence, um, something that we are contemplating now that um, most of the world is out of lockdown mm. and we're trying to um, go back to normal. Um, and um, so we are trying to promote uh, new talents mm -hmm. uh, in, in the poetic form. We have a national competition um, for different age groups, mm -hmm. um, beginning with primary school children. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there is one category for adults. Um, and the deadline for that is actually this coming weekend um, mm. for Singaporeans um, and permanent residents here. Mm. Um, and there is actually um, uh, a flourishing of uh, literature and the other arts here in Singapore, yeah. um, perhaps because of um, the generous funding uh, from the government. Mm. Um, so Singapore um, has plenty of um, resources now mm. uh, in terms of uh, finance. Mm. And some of that has been directed to the arts. Um, and so it follows that um, there are um, new uh, poetry publications all the time. Like for all the languages here, mm. uh, there's actually uh, one poetry book launch every fortnight. Wow. Um, and... Um, and many of these publications are actually supported by the government, by the National Amazing. Arts Council. Amazing. Um, yeah, and there are plenty of open mics. Okay. And with COVID, uh, much of that is online mm. as well. Mm. Uh, and uh, so there's been a flourishing. Fantastic. Uh, Fantastic. Of poetry and the arts. Wonderful. So Eric, I have time for one more question for you. Yes. Uh, yes. And this is a question for the many, many viewers and listeners who will listen to our conversation based on your amazing journey as a poet and you've uh, you know edited anthologies you've been a journalist what would you say are three lessons uh, someone who wants to write should take away from our conversation and i'm saying either prose or poetry either but what would you say are three lessons 
Okay, that's a very difficult question. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, one must have grit mm -hmm. um, because poetry is a thankless Correct. Uh, uh, career. Yeah. Um, and um, most poets have a day job. Uh, I teach. Uh, yeah. And uh, others are lawyers. Um, mm -hmm. So difficult to actually earn off um, mm -hmm. a poetry book. And uh, just to give you an idea, uh, for a $17 book here, um, only a dollar goes to the author. I know. <laughs> right. I, know. I'm aware, uh, I mean, I'm it, a published <laughs> author of many books, so I know. <laughs> yes. Much of it goes to the publisher and yeah. then the, the bookseller. Mm. Um, so it's a thankless job. So you have to persevere in it um, and try to um, do your darndest to improve. Uh, in my case, I attended... Uh, mentoring programs, um, also um, um, with help from the government here, um, and attend um, readings, join competitions. I, I did early on, uh, and uh, I was fortunate enough to win maybe a couple of them, um, and go to writing residencies in the U.S. or in yeah. other places, and attend festivals. Mm -hmm. So that's the first lesson. Of, yeah. you know, I have yeah. to have grit. Um, second one, you have to make friends mm -hmm. and be very nice to them um, <laughs> okay. because they will uh, yeah. actually help you um, advance your career. Um, mm. That has happened. I've already talked about mm. uh, the editing uh, assignments that yeah. I've yeah. had. Um, and they've, these are prestige projects um, with, with the help of friends. And um, yeah, it's just, okay. Um, yeah, uh, Bill Gates and all the other, these other um, big wigs talk about um, being nice, but really be nice. Mm, wonderful. <laughs> uh, there's no substitute. It's just that um, some people, even writers, could yeah. have an edit who attain a certain um, stature. Um, they, they may tend to have attitude problems, yeah, right. and it's... And that doesn't That's help. No, no. <laughs> right. And then the, the third one would be to be open to mystery. So there are some things that um, will always be beyond your control. You just go with it. Um, and don't say no to things. Mm -hmm. uh, don't say no to your friends who are asking you to be an editor for their editorial yeah. projects. Wonderful. Uh, don't say no to people who are asking you uh, to submit poetry to their mm. anthologies um, because that could lead to um, very memorable uh, projects uh, and fulfilling ones creatively. Wonderful. And those are my three tips. Thank you so much. Eric, on that note, uh, thank you so much for speaking to me. Uh, it's been such an amazing conversation as you took me through your journey as you took me through your imperatives of choosing certain genres that, of, that you worked on. Uh, thank you for reading out that amazing poem on trauma about what happened in Utrecht. Um, thank you also for talking to me about all the wonderful things that you're doing to support uh, young uh, poets in, in and around Singapore. And finally, thank you for your amazing three lessons. Thank you for speaking thank to me and much, good luck. Thank you very much. It's a thank real pleasure. You. Thank you. To be with you and your audience. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.